Now I am truly excited to welcome up our next storytellers, Dorothy and Wyatt, are coming to us together for what is really special when ma when parents and children tell together. So if you guys want to unmute real quick, we are excited to have you share a story. Take it away. Hi everybody. Uh, my name is Wyatt, and our story begins seven years ago on March 8th, 2013, when I was seven years old. That's the day my dad died. The nurse helped me ink up his hand to put on a t-shirt and on a poem, and it took me six hours to say goodbye to him. That day, I finally understood an important lesson that my parents were teaching me. You always say I love you before you go to bed and before you leave that person that you care about because you never know the last time you'll see that person. My dad, Dennis, was a really compassionate person. He loved fishing. He loved hunting. He loved helping others. He was one of the original artists for Dungeons and Dragons, and he loved archery, and that's something that me and him did together. Now who would I shoot with? This was a pivotal point in our lives. This is the first time Wyatt was exposed to death, and I had to make sure that it was a positive experience for him. And also, you don't get a second chance at that. So I really wanted to make sure that he had all the time in the world that he had, and that was, and he did. And that day was going to define us, or it was going, we were gonna be defined by death, or we were gonna be torn apart by grief. And we decided we wanted to be defined. Um, just because Dennis died does not mean that our love for him or our relationship died with him. Because contrary to what philosophers say, death ends a life, but it does not end a relationship. And I needed an invisible connection for Wyatt to hold on to, to his dad. And that invisible connection was a bowstring. And archery, archery became our lifeline. It was our new normal. It was our new fresh start. When I was 18, I lost my mom. Shortly after that, I lost my grandmother. And it wasn't long after that that I lost my sister. And I was a caregiver for my husband for eight years before he died. And while I was taking care of him, I was unpacking my grief from all those other losses that I had. And actually, inevitably, getting ready for my next one. It was... Uh, during these last seven years, I've had to reinvent myself. And I have um, received the certifications of a level two USA archery instructor, a grief support specialist, and also an end of life doula. And I've also gone to college and graduated that as well. And all I could think about this the whole time is the actress Ruth Gordon who said, beginnings, always have new beginnings in your life. A week after my dad died, I was sitting at home on the couch, and mom asked me what I wanted to do that day. I said, uh, just sit on the couch and talk to dad. What I meant was sit on the couch and talk to the dragon necklace that my mom gave me with his ashes in it. But she had other ideas, so she grabbed our bows, and we headed to a local archery club. It had been a while since I shot, so I was pretty rusty, but I got better with time. Mom didn't because she stunk. But and I was shooting so well that one of the members there came up to me and asked, hey, how are you shooting so good? And I held up my necklace and said, this is my dad, Dennis. He died a week ago. He's guiding my arrows. And uh, he gave me a look, a weird look. So that's when mom took over. But about a week after that encounter, I had gone to a grief camp. And there, they asked me if I could have one holiday in honor of my father, what would it be? And I came up with the dragon shoot, where thousands of archers all around the world shoot at paper dragon targets in honor of my father. And that was my big creation. But all the other kids said that it was just a dream. And everybody knows that dreams don't come true. But mom didn't really think so. She ask questions about it. She was intrigued by it, and she thought it was serious. Well, it was serious, and of course I would take you serious, because this, your dad had died, your whole world had fallen apart. And I'm not gonna let someone tell you that your dreams were not gonna fall, were not come together either. 
the way that we healed and why it was healing is uh, by our tree and by honoring his dad. So it made total sense. I mean, it's pretty cool because who wouldn't want to slay a dragon, right? There's so many dragons out there anyways. So on March 8th, 2014, we had the first Dennis Couth Memorial Dragon Shoot. We held it at our archery club in Kenosha, Wisconsin. We had 116 archers there and we raised $800 for Wyatt's uh, grief camp. And we posted pictures that night and told our story on social media. And we really just, we had an amazing day. And we, we came back to who we were, finally. It took a year, but we came back to who we were. And we woke up the next morning and it was just, wow. We didn't expect the outcome that we had. So let's fast forward and through the last seven years that we've done this, uh, we've grown from one state to 40 states. We're in 67 countries and we have raised about $85,000 um, for families around the United States, for children and, and families who have had a lost a parent, a child, or a fighting serious illness. And it's been, uh, it's been an incredible journey. Sometimes when you are, I guess sometimes when you're not sure what you're doing and you're taking a new path, you're pushing to something else. And this has taken on a larger purpose than we've ever expected it to be. Are you talking about the fact that we're now a 501c3 nonprofit or about the Dragon Slayer kids? Both of those. Okay. So about a year back, me and my mom were on mom the car. And me and my mom were on a car ride back from <laughs> Dragon Shoot. And in the car, I was curious if kids needed that support that they would get at a dragon shoot, but they can't go to one. What can we do about that? So I figured why not bring the dragon shoot to them with mini dragon shoots, which are dragon slayer kids. Actually, that was a really good idea that I had. Uh, nope. No. Absolutely not. That was mine. Mm -hmm. So here's our next idea. Dragon slayer kids. We give these out for free to schools and talk about grief, trauma, and bereavement. And we help kids with that. It's still a dream. And to think that so many people want to help me with that and help honor my dad with that is sometimes a little much, but in a good way. With all the talk about what's wrong, how about we focus on what's right? And there are so many dragons out there. Ours is grief. My personal one right now. Is this one being a teenager? Yeah, thanks. Who else? I'm sure others oh, out there. Can... Uh -huh. cool. All right. So anyways, um, <laughs> seriously, dragons can take any shape and form. They can. It can be disease. It can be trauma. It can be separation from somebody. And grief isn't just about death. Grief has so many, so many different things that's attached to it. The important thing we need to remember is we can all be dragon slayers regardless of where we are and where everyone else is. And we can always hold that metaphorical bow for somebody else who can't. And that's the important thing. Just trying to help somebody else besides ourselves as well. Seven years ago, when I was holding my son and watching Dennis take his last breath, we were holding in ours. It was, the whole feeling was like we were a windshield that had just gone through a major car crash and our, all our pieces were, were just broken up. We we're shattered. But somehow, we still had that sense of togetherness. There's somehow we were fused there. And it was, I had to make sure that we, we kept that and that we, were, we wouldn't lose that. You know, we were never really say goodbye to somebody. Um, the love that we have for them, the legacies that they leave behind, that stays with us. And the, oh, the, um, sometimes death just comes out of nowhere and it slaps you in the face. And unfortunately, you have to really just accept it, go through with it. And then I guarantee you, as time goes by, it does get better because those tears that you have, the sadness that you feel, 
eventually that same memory, that same smell, that same song, that's going to come back and you're actually going to feel comfort. And it's actually going to bring a smile to your face. Eventually. You just have to hold on. And it's it's the smiles and the comfort later that, that brings you up to where it is. Every day is a new opportunity for a new beginning. It's also a new opportunity for hope. My life was forever changed when my dad died. But, I mean, I'll never have him there for my graduations, for my wedding, to see me be a dad. But I know he's still there, and I know he's still a part of me. Every time I shoot an arrow, I can feel his presence. And I'd like to think that he's holding me and my mom from afar and grinning at us. We changed the name to the Worldwide Dragon Shooting Day because it's become that large. And the bowstring is connecting me and my dad. And archery is our lifeline. And I know that even one arrow can make a difference. And the impact of one arrow can be everything. Just as I know the impact of the Dragon Slayer kits that we made can make a huge difference to other kids that are like me. No one should ever feel alone, especially in these times. And I know that it's a little hard to connect to people, but do whatever you can. Remember to say I love you to that person that you care about before you leave them and before you go to bed because you never know when it's the last time you'll see them. Thanks for listening to our story.